Welcome everyone uh, to another stream of Ventures in Cubeland. If you're new to these, this is a stream that is happening every Tuesday at 9.30 CT. And in this stream, we're exploring Kubernetes and all the CNCF projects. Tonight, or today, depending on where you are, we're going to look at OpenTelemetry. Um, if you're new to OpenTelemetry, we're going to see what OpenTelemetry is. We're going to start from a perspective of someone that never used it. Um, and then explore the website. And if we have time, the stream usually lasts one hour. We're going to look at uh, how to use it and possibly implement uh, one service that expose at least one metric. But I don't want to spoil too much. Let's, let's see where we get and how far we can get in one hour. So I'm going to transition to my user setup in a moment. You're going to see what I'm looking at, what I'm talking about. So what I usually do during those streams is share my uh, desktop. And in this case, we're going to see, um, I usually have a terminal and uh, a website for tonight. We're going to have an editor. In this case, is a, a Visual Studio Code and the website on the other side. As I say, we're looking at OpenTelemetry. Uh, OpenTelemetry presents itself as high quality, ubiquitous, and portable telemetry to enable effective observability. The, the OpenTelemetry um, technology, I don't know if, if I want to call it technology, it's probably a set of tools. It's a collection of tools, API and SDK, uh, was um, born as an effort of standardizing the telemetry data and the uh, cloud native application would send out. So as they say, OpenTelemetry is a collection of tools, API and SDKs used to instrument, generate, collect and export telemetry data, metrics, logs, and tracing to help you analyze your software performances and behavior. OpenTelemetry is generally available across several languages and suitable for uh, for use. So what, I mean, what does it mean available? I mean, available across several languages. OpenTelemetry offers library that you can use uh, to instrument your code and is supported by the following languages. Now supported, we will see that what the support is and you can already see by the table that there is not all the support that you think there may be, but let's go through the website slowly and see what we can get. Uh, OpenTelemetry code instrumentation is supported for languages listed below. Depending on the language topic covered, will include some of or all the following automa automatic instrumentation, manual instrumentation, exporting data. If you're using Kubernetes, you can use the OpenTelemetry operator for Kubernetes to inject other instrumentation libraries for Java, Node.js, and Python into your application. So that's another interesting. Um, interesting behavior you can implement if you are on Kubernetes. We're going to look at that in a moment, but let's keep, go through the, let's keep going through the languages. The current status of the major function, uh, functional components of OpenTelemetry is the follow. So you can see that phrases are the more stable or the more widely supported, right? OpenTelemetry started covering traces. And one of the recent um, a podcast that we've done, we've done uh, a friend of mine, my friendly head of data and analytics engineer, and we discussed why tracing. And we think that is mostly because there was the unsolved problem or one day of the unsolved problem. We already solved metrics and logs, maybe not uh, nicely as we would like them to be solved, but at least we had something implementing metrics and logs. Well, for tracing, that was still quite difficult, um, especially in a world where microservices became the norm, and so, or at least became one of the more uh, um, maybe overused term. Um, and also, we were moving into the uh, fully function uh, implementation. So you would go with lambdas or Azure Functions and so on, right? So the more you split uh, your code, the more you distribute your code, the more traces or distribute traces became important uh, in order to understand what your application was doing. So, but I mean, 
let's let's leave it uh, let's leave it at that for a second let's keep going through what this says right so stable 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 beta for php python stable ruby stable and swift uh, rust is embedded and swift stable so right now it's that um, c plus plus is sharp or dot net erlang or elixir go java javascript python ruby and swift are um a safe bet when talking about traces but if you move into metrics already you will see that well for c plus plus and c sharp uh, this is stable erlang is it experimental go is in beta java I and mean, javascript are stable php is also beta python is stable ruby is not yet implemented rust is in alpha and swift is experimental and this is the i mean the one that is probably more behind in terms of implementation I don't know if the the specs are well defined, and that's probably something we're gonna look ne at next. But it's probably yeah, it's not stable for any of those, right? There is experimental for C plus uh, plus, Erlang, Java, uh, in development for JavaScript, Alpha for PHP, experimental for Python. So it's interesting that, for instance, for Go is not yet implemented. And what else? Ruby and Rust. Rust is quite behind in terms of telemetry. I didn't realize this when looking at uh, the code quickly. So again, you can actually follow those links and you will find that there are libraries uh, for you that you can use and there are details on how to use them. Um, getting started. So there is the full guide on how to integrate this with your language. And this is probably something that we're going to do later on the on the stream um so stay with me probably at the half hour uh, or at the top of this hour um we're gonna try to implement something with this but now let's go deep as i say right we want to look at what this does okay this is get started on with open strategy based on the rule i remember going through this in the past and what it shows you is if you are a developer, how you instrument your code. Uh, so you develop software, your goal is to get observed by writing code and you want to have a dependency and meet open telemetry, telemetry uh, for you automatically. But if you are an ops instead, uh, you run and set application in production, your goal is to get telemetry out of them without touching their code. And you want to collect traces, metrics and logs for services and send them off to your observability backend. Makes sense, right? Different different roles, different responsibilities. So if we look at the concept, uh, we're gonna see that, okay, the key concepts here is observably the primary, it's the first time I hear about these core observably concepts, uh, signals, components, semantic conversion instrumenting. Maybe we're gonna look at this later because I don't see huge value going deep on some of those. But if we look at maybe other things like the KS for I wanted to look at the specs to see what we are at with them. So on the spec, uh, you will see that there is the glossary and then there's the API specification, the SDK specification and the data specification. So one thing that I'm curious of, I've seen uh, some details about the, the metrics, the tracing, sorry, in the past. I'm curious about the logs and metrics, uh, but let's let's have a look at the protocol for a second. Design goals, interesting. So let me go back. I want to go straight to the logs, maybe. Okay, logs data model. Uh, this is a data model and semantic convention that allows. Let me let me zoom in for a little bit, uh, a little bit, because I'm not sure that you can read this. Uh, can someone in the chat tell me if you can read it or not? Let me read it allows to represent logs from various sources, application log file, machine generated events, system logs, etc. Existing log format can be unambiguously mapped to this data model. Reverse mapping from this data model is also possible to the extent that the target log format was equivalent, uh, has equivalent capabilities. The purpose of the data model is to have common understanding of what a log record is, what data needs to be recorded, transferred, stored, and interpreted by a logging system. This proposal defines the data model for stand standalone logs. What is a standalone log? 
standalone log, log records that are not embedded inside a span and are recorded elsewhere. Yeah, okay, but then you have to, <laughs> you have to follow up and see what a span is. So we're not going to do that for now. Um, design note requirements. The data model was designed to satisfy the following requirements. We're going to narrow down a little bit now, but it to me it's very interesting to understand what is the logic behind defining a, a logs data model. It should be possible to unambiguously learn with me. Follow along. Um, it should be possible to unambiguously map existing log format to this data model, trans uh, translating log data from an arbitrary log format to this data model and back should ideally result in identical data. Okay, yeah, interesting. Mapping of other log format to this data model should be semantically meaningful. The data model must preserve the semantic of particular element of existing log format. Translating log data from an arbitrary log format A to this data model and then translating from the data model to another log format B ideally must result in a meaningful translation of log data that is not worse than a reasonable direct translation for log format A to log format B. Okay. It should be possible to efficiently represent the data model in concrete implementations that require the data to be stored and transmitted. We primarily care about two aspects of efficiency, CPU usage for serialization, deserialization and space requirements in serialization form. This is an indirect requirement that is affected by the specific representation of data model rather than the data model itself, but is still useful to keep in mind. The data model aims to successfully represent three sorts of logs and events. Uh, system formats, there are logs that are events generated by the operating system and over which we have no control. We cannot change the format uh, or affect the information is included unless it is generated by an application which we can modify. An example of system format is syslog. Third-party applications, they are generated by third-party application. We may have certain control over what information is included. Example, customize the, the format. An example is Apache log file. First-party application, those are application that we develop and we have some control over how the logs are and events are generated and what information we include in the logs. We can likely modify the source code and application if needed. So definitions used in the document, in the document, uh, blah, blah, the document will refer to types any and map string of any, define as follows, type any, value of type any can be one of the following, a, scale, a scalar value, number string or boolean, a bad array, an array, a list or any values and map string any map where the key is a string and the value is any. Type mass string any, value of type mass string any is a map of string keys to any values. Yes, so as I say, right, keys in the map are unique. Duplicate keys are not allo allowed. Uh, the representation of map is language dependent. Arbitrary deep nesting of value for array and map is allowed. Essentially allowed to represent an equivalent of a JSON object. Both kinds, okay, that's too much. Log and event record definition, timestamp. So Appendix A contains many examples that show how existing log format map the field defined below. And uh, if there are questions about the meaning of a field, reviewing the example may be helpful. Here's the list of field in a record log. Timestamp, observe timestamp. Time when the event occurred. Time when the event was observed. Okay, interesting. This is already something very nice to see. Trace ID. Span ID. W3C trace flag. What is a W3C trace? Okay, that's that's something that I'm gonna have to look at look up. Uh, severity text. The severity text also known as log level. Okay, so the log level became severity text. Interesting. The severity number numeric value for the severity, body, the body of the log record, resource, describe the source of the log, instrumentation scope, describe the scope that emitted the log, attributes, additional information about events. Below is the detailed description of each file. Okay, timestamp, we know what this is, right? It's gonna tell you that it's probably 
U in 64 nanosecond, okay, whatever, observe timestamp, time when the event was observed by the collection system for event originated upon telemetry using common telemetry log in SDK, this timestamp is typically set at the generation time and is equivalent to timestamp for event originally originating, sorry, externally and collected by open telemetry using collector. This is the time when open telemetry's code observed the event measured by the clock of the open telemetry code. This field should be set once the event is observed by open telemetry. Um, for converting open telemetry log data to format that follow the support only one test stamp or when receiving open telemetry log data by receiving uh, by receipts that support only one test stamp sorry, recipients, uh, that's, that's, yeah, recipients. They support only one timestamp internally. The following logic is recommended. Use the timestamp if it's present, otherwise use observed timestamp. Okay, okay, okay. So what this thing is that if we receive a log that doesn't have a timestamp, then we still have the observed timestamp and that is the fallback in case timestamp is not present. Makes sense. Trace content field, trace ID, span ID. And okay, now there is a link in here. The trace ID is the, is the ID of the whole trace forest. It's used to uniquely identify a distributed trace through a system. It is represented by a 16 by array, for example, blah, 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 I'll bytes are zero is considered an, okay, so all zero is considered an invalid value. The trace ID value is invalid. For example, if it contains not a lot of char uh, characters or zeros, vendor must ignore the trace, okay. And uh, span ID uh, can be set for logs that are part of a particular processing span. If span ID is present, trace ID should be also present. This field is optional. Trace flags. Trace flag is, a, is the as defined in the W3C trace context specification. At the time of writing, the specification defines that one flag. Okay. Severity field. So we right now know that. When you translate a log from uh, whatever system you have to open telemetry logs, the log level becomes severity text. That's news to me, but hey. And then you have the severity number. And if you look at these, there are ranges. So numerical value of the severity from normalized to values described in the document. This field is optional. Severity number is an integer number, integer number. Smaller numerical values correspond to less severe events, such as the debug events. Uh, larger numerical values correspond to more severe events, such as error and critical events. The following table defines the meaning of severity number values. 1 to 4 is a trace. 5 to 8. So I'm, I'm interested to know why there is, there is a range in here. Smaller numerical value in each range represent less important severe log events. Larger, okay, more important, we already see this. For example, severity number, uh, severity number 17 describe an error that is less critical. To, okay, that, that's fine to me, but why? Mapping from existing logging system and format must define how severity particular represent numerical value. Um, the source format has more than one severity that matches a single range in this table, then the severity of the source format must be assigned numerical values from that range according to how severe the source is. Uh, information, la 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 la. Reverse mapping. Ah, oh, too much. Error semantic, okay. Trace. So in this case, what is happening is that we have different, I uh, see, okay. They're using this short name to describe the four. Is it always four? Yes, so it's always four. I didn't notice that, or well, at least I could, I didn't pay attention to this. But it's one to four, then it's five to eight, and then it's nine to 12. Uh, and so you have, okay. Info, but it's interesting that they don't do info, info one, they do info, info two, info three, info four. That's an interesting thing. Uh, okay, that's that's too much. And then, yeah, but it's, that's interesting. It's interesting to see how, what they do, right? So I think the important part in here is that we want to focus on the fact that there are um, some default values 
that you have and those are the one defined up here so you those are the metadata that are important while looking at this right and the body is the full log so that is easy so that is the specification for the um, logs now i'm curious to see the metrics if there's something similar right and i suppose that for the traces what it's going to tell us is that we're going to use the three w3c uh, traces format because it's already there the metrics that are format oh wow this is a lot of stuff shall we mm -hmm. okay what time is it 52 we said at the top of the hour uh, we were going to see a, an example implementation of these so let's maybe go through this real quick and then in eight minutes we're going to see if we can implement something with this the open term digital model for metrics consists of a protocol specification and semantic conversion for delivering uh, for delivery of pre-aggregated metrics time series data the data model is design, uh, designed to, for importing data and existing system and exploring data into existing system uh, exporting sorry importing exporting as well as to support internal uh, open term use cases for generating metrics from streams to sp of span or logs um, Popular existing metrics data format can be unambiguously translated into the open technology data model for metrics without loss of semantic or fidelity. Translation from the Prometheus and that's the exposition form. Exposition formats is explicitly specified. The model specifies a number of semantic preserving data transformation for use of a oh, wow collection price supported flexible system configuration the most supports reliability and statelessness controls uh, through the choice of cumulative and delta transport the most support cost controls through spatial and temporal regression uh, interesting the open telemetry collector is designed to accept metrics data in a number of formats transport data using the open telemetry data model and then export into existing system the data model can be unambiguously translated into the prometheus remote wire protocol without loss or features or semant of features or semantics uh, through well-defined translation of the data including the ability of to automatically remove attributes and lower historical resolution oh that's interesting that is very nice event data stream time series so status staple the otlp metric protocol is designed as a standard for transporting metric data to describe the intent intended use of this data and associated semantic meaning open term metrics data stream types will be linked into a framework containing a higher level model uh, about metrics api and discrete input values and a lower level model defining the uh, time series and discrete output values the relationship between models is displayed in the diagram below origin of a model in transit of the stream model okay i think i'm gonna go very deep on these after this stream because this intrigues me uh opportunity protocol there are a lot of details in here and i believe that no matter what you do do in the software industry this reading may be pretty interesting to understand how events can be aggregated for instance um how to represent data in time okay this is something that i'm going to share definitely share with some other colleague or engineer but look how the size of this document so definitely we don't want to spend the next five minutes reading this because it's going to definitely take more than five minutes. So let's play a little bit with open telemetry. Uh, let's see. So what do we want to do? We say that we can start instrumenting something. Um, let's see what the languages are. Definitely not C++, definitely not Erlang or C Sharp. I can go with something like Python, Java, uh, sorry python javascript or go and which one we say that can be auto instrumented definitely no was there um, java not js python but let's maybe go with python 
just for the sake of it. Um, so if I, let's say I'm in here and I want to start a Python project, what do I do? Oh man, I forgot that Python needs pip. So Python is going to be a nightmare for dependency, isn't it? Python 3.10. We have Python 3.10. Can we use, do we have pipm? Right. We do have pipm. There you go. So what do they say? Do they say to start a new pipm environment? No, they just go on and say he stole this thing. But if I do pip m, I don't remember the command of pip m. It's been some time since I started a new pip m. Okay, so pip m, blah, 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 3.7. We need 3. Point, so yes, let's do 3.7. I'm okay with 3.7. 3.7. So we're gonna, okay, let me let me also zoom in on this because I don't know if, if this is visible. And what does it say? 3.7 is not found in the system. So it's still Python. So what do we do? PyM. What if I do what what we reach 3.10 we say, right? Let's go to with 3.10. Is it possible to go 3.10? Yes, it is. And though we do pip install uh, open telemetry. Why cannot, why cannot copy this? I should probably copy this. Come on. Come on, Luca, you can copy and paste this fine. There you go. Open Tremity API. It's giving some time. You can see that the people file was already created here. Yes, and packages is not persisted yet because if I remember correctly, uh, you you have to run the freeze command in order to persist the packages. So if I do pipm and then freeze, is it freeze? Nope. What was the command? Pipm, pipm, pipm. Lock is not what we what we want. Oh, it doesn't matter. Generic. Okay, generate the requirements. Dot. There you go. Requirements, pipm requirements. No such file directory. Oh, because you need the pip file lock. Okay, we don't need that at the moment. In addition, there are several extension packages we can be installed. Uh, so if you're just following now, we're trying to create the first software using Open Telemetry. And I went with Python because why not? Uh, in addition, there are several extension packages where it can be installed separately. We don't need, there are, those are for export and instrumentation packages respectively. The Jaeger, Zipkane, Prometheus, OTLP, and Open, Consent, Open Census Export it can be found in the exporter directory of the repository instrumentation. Additional export it can be found in the country repo instrumentation. Okay, let's go here. Okay, so if I do open to export the Prometheus, that's what we want, I suppose. So I don't know. It's not like I have Prometheus somewhere for now, but let's see. Uh, Prometheus. And you know what? Let's install Jaeger as well, because I think Jaeger is easier to uh, set up. So let's do this. Or at least to run uh, standalone or in Docker. That is something that we've done the other day. Our oh, last stream uh, is not public, but you can probably, I can probably make it public if I clean it up a little bit. Then there are extensions uh, to find, uh, no, let's, let's go to the needy part. There are some functions that not yet been released in PyPy and I don't care. Getting started. Okay. Okay. L get less than five minutes. Do we have five minutes? Ooh, we have 30 minutes. Get telemetry for your app in less than five minutes. This page will show you how to get started with open telemetry in Python. You will learn how you can instrument a simple application automatically in such a way that traces, metrics, and log are emitted to the console. Oh, wow. So we don't need a backend. Great. Requirements, obviously, right? That's, that's something that you want to do when you're 
uh, which you are running stuff locally. The example, the following example uses a basic Flask application. If you are not using Flask, that's okay. You can use OpenTelemetry Python with other web framework as well, such as Django or FastAPI for a complete list of libraries for support framework. You can see, I don't care, right? For more elaborate examples, see examples. Installation, make dir cd python dash m virtual m activate. I don't know all of that. I want to install Flask. Let's install Flask. Man, it's been some time since I used Flask. And then we're going to create a file in here. New. Uh, app.py. And then we do... And now I'm not going to copy and paste, paste because I love writing this code. Random import run int uh, from Flask. It's been some time uh, since I wrote some Python. Up equal flask score name and then we're gonna create a app dot root slash what do we do? Roll dice. Of course we do roll the dice. That's why we're importing run beer, aren't we? Dev roll dice and then return str of do roll. Oh come on. And then the uh, do roll, it's going to be return run dear run int one six. All right, fine. Save this. Run the application with the following command and open localhost whatever to roll the dice. Yes, but that is that is not going to. Well, it's actually going to work because. Okay, so when you run these, this is going to be exposed on my, uh, what happened? Yes, Flask is not part, uh, Flask is not installed. Why is it assuming that Flask is installed? Did I run the... Okay, Flask is not installed because Oh yeah. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Let's do something else. And beep. Um, let's let's actually use the uh, because we're not in the beep M, I believe. So let's let's do this and use their example. Again, as I say, it's been some time since I used so I, I probably didn't activate the, the PPM. So we're gonna do what they say to do. They wanna use Python tree VM. Oh wow. That created some folders. That's why this was going this is gonna work. Then we're gonna go back and install the open telemetry libraries. You don't think those will be installed by default. Uh, but if I do these doo -doo -doo, now if I do flask and I uh, sorry, pip install flask again. Now the flask command should be then on my path. I can even do this, it's fine. Or at least it should be fine. Pip install. Yes, I've done this. If I do this, I was saying this will run. Will it? Boom. Cannot import flask from flask. But I stole Flask, didn't I? That's why I don't know. I misspelled it. Obviously. There was a typo. Open the browser. And 
there you go. So this is going to probably fail because I'm in the wrong. Why will it fail? I don't know. Let's see. Will it fail? Yeah. And now if I do roll dice, let's roll dice. There you go. Now we get the dice. That's nice. Instrumentation. I thought instrumentation will generate the telemetry data on your behalf. There are several options you can take. Covering more details in automatic instrumentation. Here we'll use the Open Telemetry Instrument Agent. Install the Open Telemetry Instrument package, which contains the Open Telemetry API SDK. Oh my God. Okay. The, and also the two Open Telemetry Bootstrap and Open Telemetry Instrument you will use you will use below. So let's do these. Let's stop these. Let's just open telemetry distro. Lots of things happening in the background, I assume. And then run the open telemetry bootstrap a install. And this is all here, right? Let's see what is it. Uh, what is this? Uh, we're learning the bootstrap. Okay, bootstrap is a Python code that is going to run what? Bootstrap import run. Okay, it's going to run it. Interesting, interesting. Okay, done. This will install the Flask instrumentation. Run the instrumented app. You can now run your instrumented app with Open Telemetry Instrument and print and have it print to the console for now. Copy. So Open Telemetry Instrument, Trace Exporter Console, Trace Metric Exporter Console, Log Exporter Console, Flask run. Why is it 5,000 now? Well, okay, default is 5,000, that's why. So let's go, oh, look, already something. Let's go 5,000, roll dice. Uh, 5,000, yes. Boom. What do we have in here? Okay, this is good. I had, I've done nothing, basically, right? But that's, that's the reality. I didn't know a single thing. It, it did the other instrumentation by itself. Yeah, the decode. That's pretty interesting. What do we get though? Is there anything useful that we get out of this? So I know that I got to roll dice, the context, the trace, kind, start time, 2020, yes, this is UTC, and time status and set, attributes. Oh, wow get port we get a lot yeah we got a lot resources python sdk name sdk version nice 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 so those are nice metadata and met resource metrics scope metrics metrics active request number of, uh, measure the number of current, oh nice, so we get some nice metrics out of these as well, uh, the duration, interesting, the aggression temporality, fine, so let's see if I can run some nice tests on this, so let's open another, uh, console in here and I can run like curl uh, I don't like these but let's see thousand roll dice I mean, is a poor man I can even refresh in here because I, I didn't have to do that but See the the exporter. There you go. The exporter is probably uh, sending data, especially the metric exporter is sending data every now and then. So it's it's collecting the data, uh, aggregating. There you go. It's the term that I was looking for, and then sending the data. Uh, that's very interesting. Okay, so it looks like that. I didn't have to do much in order to start these. Let's see what else the 
Yes. Let's see what else. The end, but this is wrong, right? This is the open localhost 8080. 8080 seems to be not the right one, unless there is something still running on 8080, and that's why it falls back into a different port. Let's see. No, there's no. Oh, maybe my port. It's busy. My. But no, because when I ran this, it was okay, right? When I was doing this. This was okay. No, it's interesting that when you run it without that, and you run these, fast run, that goes to 5,000. So maybe that's up here that we can open. So let, let me do one thing. Flask, flask, run, default port. There you go. Chain port. Okay, the default plan. Okay, I see. The default one is 5,000. So this code, this page is wrong. Wrong. Shall we tell them how do I do this? They, we may do a little bit of a contribution. We either change the command and is, we add the dash P8080 like this. And then you have it 8080. So let's maybe do that. Let's see, documentation, documentation, documentation. Usually there is a nice link to the how to edit this documentation. How much do we have? Well, we have plenty of time. We can definitely change this. Last modified to set up on port number. What? Okay. Okay. Pull request. Are we fixing that? 8080 or 5000? No, there is not like that so let's go back on that pull request with this we know that is this is the file that we want to change and so if i look at these copy it's in content english docs instrumenting python get it started um uh, da -da -da -da. uh getting started python Transition, blah, 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 Python, get it started. There you go. Find flask run. Here you go. Da, 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 da. So a part of these, we can probably do something like edit this file. And we're going to have to look at what is the contribution policy here. Oh, I'm not sending, sorry. I was going to do this, but I forgot that in this browser, for this stream, I'm not sending. You know what? We are going to do this. I promise that we're going to do this. So a nice contribution is going to be this one. I'm going to save this for me and be sure that I contribute back right after the stream. So lesson learned, stream, go through the documentation, test things, and if you find an error, please open up here. The next person is going to be very grateful. Uh, maybe there is already a... Did we check if there was an issue? Uh, yeah, I think that's what we check, right? Issues. 5,000. Nope, there is no issue. So usually on those projects, what you want to do, you don't want to open up a request right away that is you've been con contributing but you want to find the problem. If you find the problem with the content of this repo, you should like to request an enhancement, create an issue. So you should first create an issue. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. But then you submitting a change. Yeah, so you want to read this before submitting the change. So that's what I'm going to do. Promise I'm going to do that after the stream. So stop. Actually, maybe maybe tomorrow since it's getting late in here, but let's keep going. Next step. Where were we? We were up here. Do, do, do. There. After all, you should see the span print in the console such as the following. Yes, we've seen this. Yes, we've seen that. Uh, the generated spans tracks the lifetime of a request to the roll dice route. 
send a few more requests to the endpoint and then either wait for a little bit or terminate the app, you'll see metric in the console output such as the following. Yes, we have seen this as well. Version temporally, scope metrics. We've seen measured network concurrent HTTP request. This is very nice. Add my instrumentation to automatic instrumentation. Automatic instrumentation capture telemetry at the edge of your system, such as inbound and upbound HTTP request, but it doesn't capture what's going on in your application for day. You need to write some manual instrumentation. Here's how you can easily link up manual instrumentation with automatic instrumentation. Traces. First, modify app.py to include code that initializes a tracer and uses it to create a trace that's a child of the one that automatically generated, that's automatically generated. Okay, so let's see. From open telemetry, import trace. Okay, and then you want me to define a tracer, equal trace dot get tracer, and we're gonna call it dice roller dot tracer uh up is fine that's fine do, 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 do roll yes on the do roll what we're gonna do is with tracer dot start as current span do roll Start as current span to roll as roll span. Then what do we do? We assign the random integer. Uh, so res is going to be response is going to be equal to these, and then you do roll span dot set attribute. Interesting. Where is going to this is going to be in the uh, value? Equal press. Oh, interesting. So in the current span, we're gonna set a new. Wow, wow. So let's see if this works. A new value, a new uh, attribute. Sorry, that's the word that I was looking. Nope. There is an error somewhere. Get greaser. <laughs> Where did I get to get greaser? Get tracer it's not greaser run again okay now we're talking so let me let me close these uh which let me close these and let's do dash p apparently this is this is more than just the first one and open your browser of course, it's only on my default browser. If there's another window that you don't see, that's why I need to copy and paste these. But if I go to roll dice four, five, blah, blah, blah. So in theory, on one of those, we will see the roll dot value on the attribute. Attribute, is this the one? No. Let's see if we can find it. Attribute in the current attribute and where do we do it in the start do roll do roll do roll attributes roll the value equal to and i suppose that later on there's going to be the equal three right because do roll roll value one do roll uh, where is it do roll do roll, roll value five. Come on, how many times I rolled? In any case, the last one is going to be three. So that what we're doing here, we are basically creating a new metric with uh, a value that we define, an attribute that we define. Interesting, interesting. That's nice. This is nice. And the current span. Mm -hmm. there is the point to do there is we're going to be able to to visualize all the rolling that we've done with the current value something that we didn't suppose before right probably to be honest probably wasn't the response of the hum of those 
Uh, I'm not even sure if there was in the response, but this is nice. Right now, definitely we have more um, or additional information. Uh, we still have nine minutes. Let's see what we can do in nine minutes. Again, uh, probably gonna open up here for this as well, because I suppose that in this case, you gonna have the same error. Metrics. Now modify app dot pi to include code that initializes a meter and uses to create a counter instrument which counts the number of rolls for each possible roll value. Oh wow. Okay. And number of rolls for each piece. So how many times each number has a chord? Right, that's what we're seeing. So meter, obviously we were sending traces before metrics x dot get meter. Uh, dies roller dot meter and from open telemetry import. Otherwise, we're not we're not going to be able to use the metrics. There you go. Uh, where is the dice roller? What is acquire meter? What is the dice roller dot meter? Am I blind? Require meter dice roller dot meter. Okay, I'm not sure how that can happen. There is some magic going on. Uh, roll or I'm missing something very obvious. Counter uh, equal meter dot create counter. Please don't don't make typos. Counter. We don't have type for time for typos. Uh, description equal the number of rolls by roll value. Look at me. Okay, save. And then when you scroll down, because now we have to count them, right? That's not it. So we are a res, it's fine. Roll spawn set attribute is fine. And then we bump to counter. Roll counter dot add one on roll dot value res. Okay, and then you return the res. Again, we run again. It's gonna fail. Of course it's gonna fail. And it's gonna fail because yeah, that's roll is not defined. Obviously it's not defined. These must be a string. Another thing that we can fix. Look at me. We're gonna gather some contribution today. And there you go. We roll the dice. We roll the dice. I see some red. Hopefully, it's nothing too bad. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And what do we get? What do we get? Roll value. Where is the counter? Give me the counter. Give me the counter. Give me the counter. And I need to find the counter. Obviously, having the this size do roll status code attributes roll value roll dice. Let me see what I need to expect. Resource metrics. And is it there? I don't see it. So let me try to refresh a couple of times and see if that is the problem. Okay. Come on. Context. Come on. Uh, resource metrics. I don't see the resource metrics in here. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Ah, oh, metrics is ported, is there? Did we run it with metrics is ported? Now that, that I think about it. Yes, metrics is ported, is console. So if we do, let's let's try to zoom out a little bit. I want to see if that is there. I don't want to scroll too much and maybe lose it. Scope metrics, roll counter, here you go. It was there. Look at this. And the number of rolls by roll value. And then you have data points, roll value six 
value 3, real value 5, value 4. So it was there. Nice, nice. Send energy to open energy collector. This is something that probably we can do next time. But to be honest, you can see how easy this is, right? You can actually do this fairly easily. Especially with the other instrumentation. I would guess it may get a little bit trickier if you don't have this nice out instrumentation functionality that is injecting code for you, I would say, something like that. But otherwise, it's a fairly simple thing to do. Let's run another bunch of requests real quick. If you run these, then you're going to see that there is going to be some metrics supported. Come on, give me the metrics. Give me the metrics. Oh, it's not there yet. Scroll down. Okay, I'm going to stop these and we're going to see it. There you go. And this is the result. Metrics, roll counter, and you have the, all the roads. Okay, so that's all, all for today. Uh, we have a bunch of PR to open. Uh, mostly to fix the port, but also to fix this typo in here. That didn't convince me. And in fact, the quotes are missing. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, before saying goodbye, I want to remember everyone, this is the Open Telemetry um, episode of the Adventures in Cubeland. Adventures in Cubeland is a stream that happens every Tuesday night or every Tuesday at 9.30 uh, p.m. CT, uh, where we explore Kubernetes and the CNCF projects. Today we looked at open telemetry, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. This is going to help uh, spread uh, this stream. If you want to learn with me, join me next week. We're going to probably go deeper in open telemetry and see what else we can do with this. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.